Hey, Jonathan here at Topsaw. Just got this camphor log from a donation. Milling it out on the wood miser mill. It just gets better and better. So stay tuned and see how this whole log comes out. Hey, Jonathan here at Topsaw. I'm going to give an update on what's going on in the shop during lockdown, during the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, got my cage figured out a little bit more. Got a camphor log coming in from a woodworker today. Going to use a Vermeer mini skid steer and load it. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know it's a giant bear for me to load all of these logs onto the Woodmiser LT-15 because I just kind of have to really tight quarters in here. So, got a new gate put in here. This is actually super nice. Gigantic pole. I guess that's a five inch diameter pole thing. These are the 180 hinges, which are cool, and that's actually an old gate we found that we put on there. Here I am opening the gate, and you can see why the 180 hinges, it swings all the way back there. And then here I am with the Vermeer CTX-50, spinning that grapple 90 degrees, so I pick up lengthwise. I'm really just trying to do a check here to see how well it's going to go over the mill before the log comes in. So this gate looks like it's going to work like a dream. I'm using the grapple here to grab the camera, and I think the reason why the camera's blurry here is that <laughs> it was a mistake to grab the camera with the grapple, but I just love that, that little CTX-50. So here the grapple is uh, perpendicular to the treads and that way I could pull long logs out like this and with that thumb I can move them around. It's almost enough to kind of stand the grapple up or the skid steer up but I rotate it 90 and then I come in perpendicular to the log and it has no trouble picking it up. The problem I had before was when I had it that way I couldn't fit through that little side gate. So now with the new gate in there, I'm able to put the logs perpendicular to the treads and then just drive straight into the wood miser, put the grapple in between the cross beams on the wood miser and then put the logs down pretty comfortably. It's a small log, but it's kind of at the maximum capacity of the CTX-50. So I'd be able to push it around and straighten it up trying to look at it and figure out where the best slabs are going to be in this and it looks like there's a crotch in there that's going to have some nice figure so I'm trying to set it up for that. I'm going to go ahead and paint this with Anchor Seal. I like this stuff a lot. A lot less checking. I'll put a link to it. So the mill hasn't been run since we went to home for lockdown. So it's been probably about a month. Um, it's kind of nice to run some gas through there and make sure everything's still working. Nothing worse for an engine than not to be run. So it, I am taking off a lot on this butt end of the log, but there's so much taper in this log, kind of want to get you know two flat surfaces on it. So there's the first slab off. It's pretty heavy, soaking wet. I think the guy said he cut it down about three weeks ago. Smell, I mean the smell on it's fantastic. It smells like eucalyptus or camphor. I'm trying to get it vertical so I can make a perpendicular cut to that face. Um, a lot of times when we just slab these, you spend so much time with the track saw later getting a straight edge. The advantage of doing it this way is you have a straight edge, you know, you're three-sided with one natural edge and you don't have to use a track saw. The downside is it's amazing how much of the wood you end up turning into firewood. So again, I'm not taking off too much on that narrow end of the log, but as I get down to the butt end, it's a big piece of wood that gets 
um, thrown away there. I'm pretty perpendicular there. Wood's turning out to be super pretty. A little bit of a rot pocket in there. Yeah, it's kind of rotten right there. But spectacular grain. Um, I haven't got to the crotch figure yet, so I'm going to have to rotate it a few more times to get there. Okay, flopping it over. It would have been nice to cut this side next, is what I was thinking, but I didn't think it all the way through. That crotch is what I want. So that's where I want the slab, and it's now facing out um, away from me right there. It's on the opposite side of the log. And I'm cranking it down there. I'm going to mill this side flat. So this is the way I want my slabs to go. And then I come right down here. And even though that's exactly where I wanted the notch, the mill is not going to go by it. So, funny, chasing my tail here a little bit. So I pull it off, put a block in there to space it off of the rail, fire it back up. And now I'm able to get a nice flat cut on this side. So now I'm straight on three sides and I'll be able to flop it a couple more times here. But these are the boards I want to get right here. So I think I'm going to take one more off here. I bet this is a three quarter inch board. Um, it's not that pretty yet. It's starting to get to some pretty figure in that crotch. I think this board right here is a one inch thick board and this is where it's starting to get really nice. So you can see it here, that's a one inch board. I'm trying to talk to the camera over the sound of the engine. But you can see some of that streaking in there, it kind of reds and greens. It turned out to be some really pretty lumber. That's that crotch kind of facing me right there, right where that blocks offset. And some of the prettiest grain is really right right through there. There's some compression grain, some really nice figure, some really nice color. You kind of see it there. And that one little rot pocket that was on the other side didn't actually go through very far. So this is all really pretty nice solid wood here. You can see I use my Indian backpack sprayer. Um, kind of wash it down and then as you wash it down that water on there really puts a pretty shine on it, it looks like a polyurethane um, and you can see some of that really pretty streaking in there how nice this grains turning out it's usually some sort of defect like where that limb came out and got cut off um, that always gives you that pretty grain so you could see always kind of reminds me of sand in the bottom of a river flowing downstream a lot of color a lot of figure, just really beautiful wood. Excited to make something out of this, have the students make some cool projects out of this. All right, back to five times speed. You can see I got three faces there and then the milled face I'm gonna put up against those blocks and that way you could get it all the way down to like an inch or an inch and a half slab. You know, now that it's sitting flat on the bottom, sitting flat against those pieces, the milling goes really quick here. Part of the reason it took a little while here is I spent a lot of time talking today. I guess with quarantine, I'm just so excited to be out talking to folks and doing stuff. Pretty fast feed rate, pretty wet wood. It does smell really strong. And I think those were one and a halves one and a half inch thick slabs. And I think this one right here is a one inch thick slab, leaving me with a two inch slab on the bottom. I'm not stacking them, I'm just pulling them off to get done before it gets dark on me. Um, you could really see how this bottom slab, this two inch thick slab, really turned out to be one of the prettiest. Okay, spinning the grapple 90 again. Go out and grab one of the Madrone logs that Tree Safe dropped off. This is a couple of multi liters that grew together, so they should create a spectacular grain. But I'll put that off for another day. But you can see how well that grapple works with my new fence.
This wood came out beautifully. You know, the geese flying overhead. Just beautiful colors, beautiful figure. Got a few boards out of it after all. You know, I have to sticker these and get them set up. If you like this video, hit like, hit the bell for notifications, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. This is Tops All, all Things Wood, uh, from tree work to woodwork. So I teach high school wood shop, even though we're on lockdown right now. And do tree work on the weekends, mill lumber out. So thank you for watching. Love to hear your comments below. See if you have any better ideas on how to mill. That'd be great. But I'm getting it figured out. Look at that. That's cool.